Hogwarts Castle, a 5 inch gauge locomotive. This is part 24, refitting the cylinder drain cocks and the operating linkages. And here are the set of drain cocks I'm going to fit. This is the second set I bought because I lost the first set. But I'm sure one day in the workshop they will turn up. Before I start the job, it's very important to mention that these things are handed. This clip shows what I mean. I fitted a pair randomly out of the packet and they're the wrong way round. If I move the operating arms so they both point in the same direction, then one drain cock is open and one is shut. What I normally do is use pins to identify which is which. With the drain cocks open, you can insert the pin. With the drain cocks closed, you can't. So here you see that they're the right way round. Please note that for this job, I am using glass headed pins. I don't recommend using a needle or a very small pin or even a piece of wire because it could fall through the hole into the cylinder and then that would be a problem. Now I've identified which drain cock fits in which cylinder, the next thing I need to do is fit shim washers so they're in the correct position when they're screwed into the bushes. This can take a while. First of all, I select a suitable shim washer and this one is not a suitable shim washer because it's too thick. I'll try again, and this time I'm using a thinner washer. So the point of shim washers is they're all different thicknesses. Sometimes you have to use one shim washer, other times you have to use more than one to get the suitable thickness so the part can be screwed tightly in position. This is quite a thin shim washer, and now the drain cock is in the right position, so it needs a touch of Loctite 542 to stop it leaking, and then I can tighten it up. If you look at the drain cock on the right hand side, you can see why I use glass headed pins. Look, it's fallen right down into the cylinder. One down, three to go. I've removed the drain cock complete with the pin. Even though I haven't shown it in the video, I did have two or three attempts at this one. And finally, I settled on two shim washers, a thin one and a thick one, which allows me to screw the drain cock into the correct position. You have to be really careful when you're doing this job. The shim washers need to bring the drain cock into almost the perfect position, but not quite. So spend sufficient time getting the combination right. If you over tighten these drain cocks, then they may break off, which is not a good thing, or they may distort and leak. And as I've said before, the last thing you want in your life is a dribbling drain cock. I've applied some Loctite 542, and it's now time to screw the second drain cock in position. And to do this, I always use my trusty Barco spanner because the jaws are large, it's very firm, and it doesn't mark the work. And just to verify that I haven't made a mistake, as you can see, the pin goes through when the arm is in this position. Drain cocks are no good unless they can be operated remotely from the cab. And that's where this lever comes into play. The linkage from the cab to the drain cock is quite complicated and all the links are held in place by 10 BA bolts, and 10 BA bolts are very, very small. This clip shows what was wrong with the original drain cocks. They were very worn and very loose. This is just one of them, and they're all worn. I'm going to reuse the 10 BA nuts and bolts, though. In this clip, I'm using my Proxon motor tool to open up the holes in the levers. This is a 16th of an inch diameter drill. You will notice an alternative use for my Barco spanner once again, to support the arms while they're being drilled. It's not a good idea to use bolts as bearing surfaces, but really making pins at this size would be a real pain. And they don't wear, they really don't wear hardly at all. But using bolts for valve gear components is out of the question. Any parts that move a lot, like valve gear components, definitely need bearing pins. A screw thread as a bearing pin on valve gear is definitely to be avoided. But as I've just mentioned, it's okay for this application because the drain cocks don't get moved all the time. With the second bolt through the drain cock arm, locked in place with a nut, it's time to fit the operating lever. This part of the linkage was very sloppy, so I just tightened the nut and it was okay then. And before I forget to mention, here I'm applying some oil to the linkages. A bit too much oil, but never mind, it will wipe off. I haven't yet painted the cylinder cladding. There's a reason for this. If I paint it this early on in the rebuild, it's going to get chipped and marked. So the cylinders will be the last paint job on the chassis. 
In this clip I've been fitting the link arm and as you can see I'm fitting lock nuts so that they don't fall off. I also oiled all of these moving parts but once again I used too much oil so here I'm using a cloth to remove some of it. Some of these 10 BA bolts were just snipped off with a pair of side cutters after they were fitted originally. I don't like that so I filed it flat. Even though it's completely out of sight underneath the locomotive, I would know that it was there. So maybe that's a little bit obsessive, but I do like to do the job properly, and here I'm also fitting the lock nut. Time to test how free the linkage is, and yes it's okay, it's moving quite smoothly and it's not locking up. Time for a bit more oil on this part of the linkage, I think. When the engine's finished and in service, this part of the engine is very oily anyway because when the drain cocks are open, they issue forth quite a lot of steam, oil and water, not necessarily in that order. Now with the linkage fitted in place to both of the levers on the drain cocks, I can test the entire assembly. And it seems to be okay, but I can see a problem. Can you see what the problem is? Anyway, for now I'm going to move on and finish the linkage. This is a bottle of Loctite 243, and as you can see, it says thread locker on it. Why am I using thread locker? Well, there's no room to put a lock nut on this part of the linkage. The bolt is too short. When I looked in my small drawer full of 10BA bolts, I just didn't have any that were long enough. 10BA is not a size that I use very often. I use brass 10BA bolts for boiler banding and things like that. Using brass 10BA bolts wouldn't be strong enough for this job. And there you have it. One side is done, but there's a bit more to do yet. And as always, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.